The other night I saw Hardcore Henry, a movie that was very obviously influenced by uh, first-person shooters. And tonight I saw a movie called Beyond the Bridge, a movie that was very obviously influenced by survival horror video games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. The movie revolves around this girl named Marla, and after her parents had died in a car crash, she has to come home and oversee the selling of their house. She hadn't been in a house in years, and her best way of coping with this is to throw a gigantic party. While the party, one of these guys passes out pills, and Marla takes it and proceeds to pass out, only to wake up in a garbage bag in the middle of nowhere. Right from there is when it completely switches gears and turns into more of the survival horror type homage. Everything from the heartbeat sound to the really weird music to these little clues that are being left all over the place, and even a third person camera view. It had that very murky survival horror look. And when they weren't doing the third person camera view, they are doing the static shot, very reminiscent of Resident Evil. It felt like you're watching somebody do one of those live action recreations of a video game. And it worked. After that, she gets to a point where she wakes up and it's the next day and everything is kind of back to normal. The way that it worked is every day a little bit more of the story was unfolding. And then at night, they switched into the video game homage portion. She's not running around escaping from Pyramid Head or shooting zombies or anything, but it had that very offsetting, uncomfortable tone, much like the first 20 minutes of Silent Hill 2. They even threw in a meet at our special place line, which I liked a lot. The movie apparently cost like 10,000 euros, which I checked in the currency calculator. That's like $11,000 US. So it's not a huge production. There's not a lot of uh, flashy effects. Some of the acting is a little sketchy at times, but the lead actress, I thought, did a really good job. It was a major labor of love. Apparently it took five years to film, which is somewhat apparent in the beginning because Marla pulls out a flip phone. That right there tells you that uh, this is from a few years ago. But they spent their money very well because it does look good. The weird stuff is effectively done. And honestly, I I've seen movies that have cost more than this not look as good. The vast majority of the movie was Marla going back and forth and trying to figure out this mystery. Every day there's a little bit of the story unfolding and then at night is the mystery portion and she's trying to figure out that and she's kind of going back and forth between the real world and the evening dream world. When the movie first switched over to the night when she woke up in the garbage bag, that's when it really changed gears for me. That's when I started genuinely being invested in the film and I kind of wish that there was a way they could have done it just like that throughout the rest of the film because the evening portions when she's figuring things out and it's just very unusual and weird is when the movie was at its best and then during the day it kind of had like a soap opera feeling to it not bad but it just wasn't as strong as the evening portions I like that they did video game logic. There was a scene in particular where Marla walks up to a fence and the fence is locked and she's looking around and she can't climb over the fence. She needs to get through. So she walks over and there's a box and inside the box is a key. And then she uses that key to go unlock the door. (laughs) The downside to this is I could see if you're not really a big survival horror fan, you might not get all the little nods and homages to the various games and it might just come off as bad. The music was also very obviously Silent Hill influenced. It fed really well into the night sequences. The cinematography in the movie was really nice, too. There were a lot of long shots of the bridge. There was this one particular tunnel that they kept showing over and over again, but it wasn't done in a beat-you-over-the-head kind of way. It was actually really artfully done. Some of the woods they were going through in the various locations, they whoever location scouted for them did a, a great job. The story played out really well. I was following everything, uh, even all the twists and turns and just bizarre stuff that was going on, and I was enjoying it. I did think it got a little too convoluted towards the end, but still I saw everything the director was going for, and I did enjoy it. If you like mystery thrillers, if you're a fan of survival horror games, 
and you don't mind micro-budgeted features, give this one a look. It's not going to be for everybody. I could see some folks uh, getting pissed off and turning it off in the beginning. Stick with it when things switch to the night world is when it really takes off, and that's when I think it'll really hook people. That's when it hooked me. I thought the movie got a lot better once that happened. (laughs) 